before we get started, let's give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. That's Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai being the true name of our Lord and Savior. The Rakakadash being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing us this truth. Honor to all the brothers pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And shout a to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people that's going to return back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so that he will have mercy on them in his time of judgment. So we back through another quick lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, this is going to be warning number five. Number four, I touched on, you know, how we don't let nobody pull us out this truth. That we're going to have all kind of people that come up against us. Like I was telling you, when the lady I deal with, she was saying uh, I'm brainwashed and that I'm so far gone that there's no help in me. And I told her, we're going to see who really brainwashed. <clears throat> and that's the thing that's beautiful about the gospel of Yahweh Shai. All things come to an end. Like I was telling her, she asked me when I'm going to stop making videos. I tell her, with this truth, all things come to an end. <clears throat> so we're not going to be teaching forever, which, I, which, she, which she don't get. But and that's what's beautiful about it. With Christianity, you know, you just teach forever, preach that it's always going to be okay. Do with Christianity, nothing ever pops off. Prophecy ain't happening. But when this testimony of Yahweh Shai started spreading, that's Matthew the 24th chapter, that this gospel must be preached into all the world, into all nations for a witness, and then the end shall come. This gospel has been preached all around the world, and now the end has come. The prophecies is being manifest. That's what's beautiful about this truth. It has an end. Since it's been spoken of, the end is coming. And that's the end of lies, deceit, darkness, the end of the white man, the end of everything. But, um, and one thing that, that troubles the people that they don't get is they don't perceive us as being men of the Lord, going all the way back into, even to the time of Yahweh Shai, just because he was another black man like them, seemed to be poor seem not to be wise you know they didn't believe them they despised them and that's us now because one of the things my lady said she was like well how do you know you the lord's chosen i was like i don't know but we have hope and it's simple as that and how do we have hope because we believe in the true doctrine and we pushing this word back out there as it was commanded it's like when you get a lottery ticket hey you're gonna be a hopeful lottery winner you might not, you're not the winner yet, hey, but you could say, hey, your name on a list to where I might win this lottery. Same with us. Our name is on the list for the hopeful elect. And we hope when the time comes that we're part of that elect. We, we hope that our lottery ticket get drawn, that we could be a winner and receive salvation. But let's hit this real quick, John chapter 10, verse 19. <clears throat> There was a division, there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. So as you look up and read, Yahweh Shai was schooling them, giving them some knowledge, but there was a division among the Jews. And that's how it is now. When we tell people what's in the scriptures and give them the breakdowns, there's a division. Some people are going to believe us. Some people are going to be against it. And not only that, once we start speaking, people are going to separate themselves from us. That's friends, family, strangers, hey, even your spouse. Usually when I bring up this truth to my lady, it's, it sparks a, a sparks an argument. It divides us. <laughs> but let's continue. And many of them said, he hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Yeah, and that's what people say. Like, man, this man crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. This dude got schizophrenia. They say all kind of stuff about us. They say we insane. They say man, that man demon possessed. Like my lady said, I'm brainwashed. And I remember one time uh, she told me that I was trying to brainwash her. I'm like, how can I brainwash somebody when what I say word for word is in the Bible and I can go to it? We don't just speak it. We can show. But, hey, that's what people say about us because we regular men. And we appear to have no power, no social influence. No, um, no economic wealth, and so they they perceive us to be um, 
somebody who you don't listen to. And when we out and about teaching, that's one of the first things they want to say. Well, who's your teacher? They want to question what I know or who I learn from just because we're not wearing a suit and got a microphone and ain't got a TV channel and a stage we standing on. But the Lord set it up to be that way to filter out the undesirables. And that's why when we continue, and others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Yeah, and some of the people, um, so uh, everything that happened physically back then is happening spiritually now. Yahweh Shai opening the eyes of the blind people back then is a uh, is prophecy for what's going on now. Yahweh Shai physically opened their eyes, but Yahweh Shai is spiritually open our eyes in this day. So he physically opened our eyes back then to show how he was spiritually open our eyes now. So when it reads, can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Yeah, because he did that miracle back in the day. But us, the man of the Lord, we open in the eyes of the blind. And not physical eyes, but spiritual eyes. We can make sense of spiritual things. We can make sense of the world according to the scriptures, what's happened, what's happening now, and what's going to happen. So, so and people with wisdom that hear this truth, that understand it, they, they, they can say this. They can say, man, yeah, that brother, man, he opened the eyes of the blind. Meaning we gave them understanding of the word of the scriptures, you know, through the words of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. So we open in the eyes of the blind, meaning we giving people understanding of what they were blind to, but they can now see it. And it's poor men doing this. So-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men, men who has no, who have no power. So now we're going to hit Luke chapter 7, verse 33. You know, Yahweh Shai was schooling them, giving them some knowledge. Then when we hit verse 33, For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath a devil. Yeah, because we ain't got to be doing nothing. You don't see us eating. You don't see us drinking. You don't see nothing we do outside of teaching this truth. Yet people say, man, that dude crazy. That dude don't know what he's talking about. Or that dude got a devil. Or that dude racist. Do you know what I'm saying? They ain't got nothing to accuse us on, but what we speak. And then when we continue, the son of man is come eating and drinking. And ye say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber and a friend of publicans and sinners. Yeah, and that's uh, us today. You know, they saw Yahweh shot eating bread and meat, drinking wine. They tried to say he was a gluttonous. And they said he was a wine bibber, meaning he was a drunk. And they say he was friends of publicans and sinners. And he was friends with everybody. But then, you know, they tried to discredit him as being a man of God. They tried to discredit his wisdom. And that's like us. That's because Yahweh Shai was a low man. And we low man today. So that's like us. You know, people see us doing things that everybody else do. They see us. You know, eating, living our daily lives, working. Hey, they may see us having a good time sometime. And they say, see, he doing everything we do. He a gluttonous man. He a wine bibber. You know, breaking stuff all out of proportion. But if you continue, but wisdom is justified of all her children. So it ain't what we do, eating and drinking that justify us. It's the wisdom that's inside of us and the wisdom that we push out to our people that justify us. Then when we go back up, they frame the publicans and sinners. They see the people we are cool with in the physical world and associate with, and they try to take anything else in, in, your, in, your, in your outside life, and they try to use that to discredit your wisdom or discredit what you're saying or discredit you as a person not having the Holy Spirit. It's one thing one of my my ladies said, she was like, you can't be a man of God. Look how you treat me. And what I told her, like, me, my what determines my relationship with the Most High is between me and him. It's between me being a faithful servant 
And what I do, being a servant, it's not based on how I treat you. We're not going to get salvation by treating your lady how she want to be treated. And all, and all that was doing is she don't get all my attention. You know, she want to be a contentious woman. She want to stir up, you know, start up a fight. Then hey, you play with fire, you're going to get fired. You you come running up, cussing me out, yelling, and hey, you're going to get cussed out. I'm going to let you know that you a woman, and I'm going to show you I'm a man. And that's really for everybody, and that's us, and it's true, because America teach you to turn the other cheek, be soft. No, nah. go through the scriptures, all the prophets was bold, man. The prophets was always cussing somebody out. Nehemiah, he laid hands on some of his people, beat them up, pulled their hair out, cussed them out. One time, Yahweh Shai went in, the, went in the church house when they were selling the animals. He flipped over the tables, was made a cord, was whipping the animals up out the church, was whipping them niggas, ran them up out the church. So, yeah, they look at what we do with our outward lives. That's why she said, you can be a man of God. Look how you treat me. And honestly, anybody that know me, you know the situation, she, she, gets, she gets treated good. It's nothing like that. And, you know, us being in this truth, we, we realize that a lot of times our significant other, they get jealous because of the time and dedication we, we put towards this. So again, they look at what we do outwardly and try to discredit who we are spiritually. They try to discredit who we are inwardly. And that's why um, when, when, when the Messiah anointed David, he told Samuel something like, um, man, look on the outward appearance but but the Lord considers the inner man. Yeah, because it ain't what we do with our outside lives that justifies us before the Lord. It's what's inside us. And what's inside us is this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Now, that don't mean you can have this truth and just be doing all kind of reckless stuff, but having this truth inwardly is going to move you accordingly. If you really got this truth inside inside of you, this truth is gonna guide is gonna guide your steps. It's gonna guide your thought process and how you act out in the world. So everything comes with it from within. So even those who don't got this truth, you know they from the streets, they a nigga inwardly, they gonna be a nigga outwardly. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna do all manner of stuff. But us having this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's, it's going to manifest in what we do outwardly. But again, that's why again, but wisdom is justified of all her children. And this wisdom justifies us. And when we hit 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So yeah, when we bring people this truth, when they want to come up against us, they want to discredit what we're saying, they want to resist it, and they don't like it, or they got a personal problem with us, so they using their personal problem with us to discredit this truth, like my lady was doing, well, I, I, uh, how can you be a man of God when you treat me like this, you know what I'm saying? That shows that not the spirit anyway. And anyways, um, they don't despise us, they don't despise our word, they despise God, who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So it's it's the most high, Yahweh Bashimi Shai, who gave us the Holy Spirit to hold this knowledge and to spread his word. So if we spread this word and people don't accept it for any for any reason, it's not us that they despise. It's the most high they, they despise. And what's the main reason they despise us? Like who this nigga think he is? He just another nigga like me. Just another black man, ain't got no tuxedo, no microphone, no platform. Um, he poor. He, we ain't got no social influence. We ain't got no economic wealth. Um, what else? Or people got a personal problem with you. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we still got the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's 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 not it's 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 not lust they despise. It's the Most High they despise, because the Most High gave us a spirit to hold this stuff to bring it to y'all. And a lot of people resist it just because of how they feel about us. But that's the Lord tricking y'all, because y'all thought the Lord was going to send an angel. 
and white clothing to give you this truth. No, nah, the Lord sent you this truth to somebody that looks like you because they can best relate to you. But we're going to go on to our next scripture. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained which he seeketh for, but the election hath attained it, and the rest were blinded. Yeah, because what, what do we all seek in earth? We seek comfort. We seek relief. We seek to have an easy life. Well, the election have attained it. Because the scriptures is our comfort, knowing that we have a kingdom waiting on us, but the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber. That's the spirit to be asleep, to not have their spiritual eyes open, like you have a sight open the eyes of the people. Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Yeah, because the Lord closed their eyes and closed their ears, so they can't receive this understanding. And David saith. Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense to them. And what's this table? This table is your mind, your thought process, how you receive information. And the minds of the people is a recompense to them. It's the minds of the people that blind them from this truth that they can't see it or can't hear it. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai closed their eyes he gave them the spirit of slumber and we was all asleep at this one point even us that's in the shoe we had the spirit of slumber but Yahweh Shai woke us up and the people who didn't wake up they bow down their back all way meaning they're going to be in subjection to other doctrines to false ways they're going to be following the ways of error you know just pretty much they're going to go after everything but this truth and that's why when we hit Job 12 and 26 it reads, with him is, with, is strength and wisdom. That's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the deceived and the deceiver are his. So the white man is a deceiver. That's, that belongs to the Most High. The Most High sent the white man to deceive. And if he was deceived by the deceiver, the Lord planned it that way. The Lord didn't want you anyway. And that's a fearful thing with the Lord. And that's why when we continue, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Yeah, because again, if you despise us, it's not it's not us you despise. It's, it's the most high you despise. If you despise the words we speak, it's not the words you despise. It's the most high you despise who gave us his Holy Spirit. So again, if you despise us, the man of the Lord, or despise the word, you know, many the word because that's what we carry. The word is inside of us. So if you despise the word, you're going to be destroyed. And that's by nuclear fire. That's why we're seeing this stuff build up with Russia and the U.S. Everybody who despises his word and not in his truth, they're going to be destroyed. But he that fears the commandment shall be rewarded. And the commandment is this book in its entirety. And that reward is ultimately going to, re going to re lead to mercy and salvation. So again, anybody who despises his word is going to be destroyed. So don't let nobody pull you out the truth. Because time is short. We almost at the finish line. Then Lord willing, because of our fear of commandment, we shall be rewarded. But don't let nobody pull you out this truth. And don't let nobody discourage you. Because people coming up against us, it's a spiritual thing. And it's, it's, it's popping off all over the world. But us in this truth, we having trouble with all kinds of people everywhere we go. But that's the lesson here. Just another word of encouragement and a warning to not let anybody pull you out this truth. Until next time, shot.